I think it has everything to do with retaining clients. So our, our business is very complex, but at the same time, it's very simple. So in order to grow, all you need to do is keep your clients yep. and keep your employees. Yep. And if you treat them well, they'll stay because at other places they go, they won't be as happy. Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Kevin Miller. He's the co-founder and CEO at Grow. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kelsey. I'm super excited to be here and talk about our business and what we've got going on. Yeah, great to have you. So, Kevin, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, um, I'm 31 years of age. I grew up in Daytona Beach, Florida. I spent time living in a, a bunch of different places um, like Washington, D.C., San Francisco, and now Los Angeles. And, um, you know, I really enjoy the landscape in, in Los Angeles, the hiking, the the beaches, all that type of stuff is like what I like to do outside of work. And with work, I'm a digital marketing expert right now. Like, like you mentioned, I'm the co-founder and CEO of grow.com. And um, I've been doing that for the past three years. And we've got about 100 employees. We work with a number of clients, which I'm sure we'll get into, but that's a little bit about me. Nice. Awesome. So tell me more about Grow. So Grow is a digital marketing agency that's full service. Okay. We started with search engine optimization. That's our main core service that we were known for for the first year and a half. Yep. And um, you know, our job was to get people to rank number one on Google. And most of our clients are direct consumer e-commerce businesses. So think like Lululemon, Ritual.com, yeah. Caraway Home, play, people like that. Um, you know, really well-known national businesses. And so we we got our reputation by working with them and doing a really good job. And then we started to add on complimentary services. So now we have we offer Google ads because it's the same exact keyword that you would target with organic search. Makes total sense. Um, and then we started to get requests from our clients to help them with other channels. So we do affiliate yeah. marketing now. We do email marketing. We do Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, we do influencer marketing. And the way that we've done that is we've gotten out and recruited one or two subject matter experts for each channel that like live and breathe that. So okay. for example, myself and my co-founder, we live and breathe SEO. That's why we started with SEO. And then we've gone and found seven or eight other department heads who either had their own agency or, or just like have been doing this on their own. Yeah. And um, they're really passionate about it. And they're now starting those teams and leading them at Grow. Yeah, nice. That's fantastic. So what would you say kind of besides an all encompassing, you know, digital marketing industry, what makes Grow stand out? I would say it's how we communicate with clients. We don't just do the work. Like I really, really think that the big difference is that we we educate our clients on how and why we're doing the work that we're doing. Yeah. And we're really communicative. So like we have calls, we we communicate with the client like three times as frequently as I think other agencies may. So that could be with, you know, Zoom calls like we're on right now, Slack, which is totally standard. What's not standard is we call and we text our clients. Like we really get to know them. Are they married? Are they single? Do they have kids? You know, we get to know them as an individual. Yeah. We also send Loom videos. So every, um, every week you'll get like a video of someone saying, hey, here's what I'm working on for you this week? Is there anything else on the agenda? And then we'll send another video that says like, hey, here's what I did for you. Here's a screen share, documenting that, articulating what we've done. So I think we keep our clients more in the loop about what they're paying for. We're constantly reminding them why they're paying us. Yeah. And I'd say that that's the differentiator. That's fantastic. And it sounds too like, you know, being very communicative, like you said, is, is one of the core tenets of, of Grow. Would you contribute that or attribute rather that that communication to part of the success of Grow? Yes, I think it has everything to do with retaining clients. So our, our business is very complex, but at the same time, it's very simple. So in order to grow, all you need to do is keep your clients yep. and keep your employees. Yeah. <laughs> Much easier said than done. But if you do yeah. those two things, you'd be shocked. I mean, that that is how we grew. We yeah. made sure that our customers were really happy. Mm -hmm. And then I'm big on culture. I really care about our people. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, our product is our people. So like if I'm happy coming to work, 
that is going to make other people feel happy at work. That is going to make them feel valued. Yeah. And if you treat them well, they'll stay because at other places they go, they won't be as happy. And so yeah. that's what we focus on. And that's how you really grow. And that's what I would attribute our success is like, it starts with the customer and, and it also starts with the people on our side. Yeah. Talk to me more about how you and your co-founder have been able to grow the business over the years. Well, we, we have a unique skill set in that we are very strong at sales and interpersonal networking, but we also do the, 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 the work. Like we refer to ourselves as SEO, digital marketing nerds. Like we have our own website that we built uh, that demonstrates our SEO skills. Yeah. We, so we do the work. So therefore when we're pitching it, there's no question that a client could ask me about yeah. digital marketing or a service we're offering that I can't answer. So like, even when it comes to Google ads, I mean, I worked at Google running ads for brands yeah. um, from 2014 to 2016. So yeah. I'm the one going in the account and doing it. So they, they, I think that, I think that comes through in the call and they realize like, Hey, I have the real practitioner. This isn't a sit. There's a lot of digital marketing agencies that have salespeople that haven't done the work. And you can yeah. tell in the way that they describe it, they're, they're a little bit high level. They're a little bit too high level. Yeah. They, can, they can't like really get in the weeds. And I think that's what makes us different. And then my partner and I still pitch a lot of the companies. So like one of my sales, you know, sort of like tactics on a call just this week was, Hey, look at the other agencies that you're working with. Are the two founders talking to you or is it like they're people? Yeah. You know, yeah. um, at some point I would like it to be, you know, our, our other salespeople, but like, you know, we're still at the stage where that's not the case and, you know, we're spending our own time doing it. So you get better work product if it's like, you know, I really care because it's my business, you know? Right. Right. So you're not only talking the talk, you're walking the walk and it shows like, you know, through your passion that I'm hearing in your voice right now, kind of how hands on your leadership style is. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. That's great. That's great. So talk to me, you know, a little bit about how you knew you were on the right path to success with Grow. Well, we started to get good feedback from our clients that said, this is the best SEO service we've had. Mm -hmm. And that felt very good. And then I kind of dug into why and I learned that, you know, all of our workers are US based. There's zero outsourcing overseas. Um, we got good results. You know, we started yeah. to really drive good results for people. And yeah. So I think that that's what really led to us growing and starting to get referrals to other other businesses. Business yeah. owners that we made happy wanted to go make their other friends happy who happened to own businesses. And then it started to spread that way. Yeah. You you mentioned, you know, uh, being called, you know, the having the best SEO. So what did that look like? What did you do to be able to get that feedback? Well, we write blog posts for every one of our clients. So let's say you had an e-commerce business. We would write 10 to 15 blog posts per month per client. Mm -hmm. And when you publish that much content on your website, Google loves that. Yeah. So for example, uh, there's a brand that I love called Gainful.com. It was started by um, a friend of mine and they are they sell protein powder. So we would write articles that say, what is protein powder? What are the benefits? Yeah. What's the best time to take it? What's the best dose to take it in? There wasn't a question about protein powder that this company didn't answer. And yeah. so when people were Googling around that, they showed up number one across the board for all of those queries. And it changed the face of their business because they were able to get millions of eyeballs to their website over you know a two year period of time. It definitely took a while. Oh, yeah. um, and then they, as a result, they were able to capture thousands of email addresses, thousands of phone numbers. It propelled their whole funnel. So they could do email marketing, SMS marketing. They could do influencer marketing. It was the engine that propelled all other channels to make it really work as a business. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really hard, you know, you know, for especially for marketing agencies, marketing companies to be able to, you know, show value in content um, and the importance of SEO is, is unparalleled. Absolutely. Yep. And a lot of people don't focus on it or it's an afterthought. And that's a big mistake for a lot of brands because it does take a while. So you want to get it started early yeah. and make sure, you know, you have the right strategy that's going to work and scale over time. Yeah. Break down again a little bit more for me kind of about the other services, you know, and, and the different, you know, arms of the company that Grow has. Well, so back to the SEO real quick. So we have the content writing. Then we yeah. also do backlink building. So we have like a, a full press team. It's as if you're hiring a a press agency that we can get you featured in Forbes, Wall Street Journal, CNN, you know, you name it. 
-hmm. And then we do technical SEO, um, which requires like a lot of engineering work to make your website fast and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other channels are all focused on performance marketing, like driving real performance. So Facebook ads, Instagram ads, affiliate marketing, TikTok ads, um, influencer marketing, email and SMS. You know, there's about 14 different marketing channels yeah. that, that exist in the world today. We cover about 10 of them right now. Next year, at the end of 2023, we'll cover all of them. But that includes Amazon marketing. That includes um, conversion rate optimization. That includes organic social media management. So like who's going to run your Instagram account organically? Yeah. We also have a new service called LinkedIn Storytelling, where we will write stories on LinkedIn for you, on, uh, you know, on behalf of you as, as like a executive, a CEO, a C-level individual. Yeah. You'll talk, you know, you'll, you'll talk with a ghostwriter and they'll put out stories about what it's like to work at your company, your management style, your values, what you stand for. And so you know, the whole goal is that a company like Nike could come to us and they'd say, we want all 14 of your channels yep. working on this shoe line. Yeah. So that's kind of what we're going for. That's fantastic. So you mentioned a lot of, you know, really big, high level companies. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, that target audience that you tend to see the trends with that are working with Grow. Well, a certain size company, kind of break that down for me. Yeah. So the the absolute core customer is your direct to consumer e-commerce business that's doing anywhere from a million to, to $10 million annually in revenue. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of companies you haven't heard of, but you'd be surprised that they have like really good products that, you know, that, that resonate with consumers. Yeah. So they could be selling nail polish. They could be selling, you know, we have a, we have a company called clutch nails, which is like, you know, you put like a little, a lot of girls are easily able to like append like a nice looking nail to their finger. Um, <laughs> And, you know, we work with Lashify. That's like an eyelash company. Dolash is another eyelash company. So it's companies like that, that like, you know, people haven't really heard of, but are really doing well digitally. They don't have any storefront, no brick and mortar, no retail, no partnerships with retail. And it's just people coming straight to their website. And we're the ones helping them get people to the website. That's fantastic. So it sounds like that's one of the biggest problems that Grow is able to solve for people is, is getting that exposure. Exactly. Yep. Yep. At a very cost effective, in a very cost effective manner, we can do it ch more cheaper and more easily, more simple than, than pretty much any other agency that I've been around. That's a fantastic be able, you know, being able to say that. Yeah. Yeah. We worked hard to be able to say that, yeah, <laughs> but right? you know, we have small teams, you know, we don't overload yeah. the teams with, with yeah. too many people, not many, too, too, not too many cooks in the kitchen. Yep. So it, it contributes to that. You know, yeah. we just have the people that are there to like get the work done. Yeah. So you you mentioned that you and your co-founder started, you know, with SEO. Talk to me a little bit about, you know, how that was able to evolve and the trends that you've seen and how Grow is able to adapt to those changes. Well, when we started the company, it was right at the same time that iOS 14 came about. And with that, you know, just in a nutshell for the people listening, that made it harder to target your core customer as as specifically as you used to. So if you used to have to reach 10 people in order to generate one sale with an ad, you now had to reach 30. And so that made your ad spend more inefficient. So if you were acquiring a customer for 20 bucks, it became 30 or 35 or 40. And so as that channel became less profitable, people wanted to spend money in other places and they wanted to spend it on channels where they owned the customer. And that was SEO. Yeah. If you get someone to come from SEO, like you own them because you're not paying for any ads. There's no ads involved. And so that's how, you know, that that's how we really caught fire was it was the right time to have that service. Yeah. Then now, at, now that we have the recession, that's like sort of looming over us and people are worried about inflation and mortgage rates. SEO is more of a nice to have. So the, sh the budget has shifted back from SEO into Google ads, Facebook ads, Anything that's direct response channel where you know that if you're going to put in one dollar, you're going to get X amount out. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why we have to have the other channels. If we didn't bring in the other channels, the customer would leave. We yeah. need to give them the flexibility to say, OK, we've done enough on this channel. Let's reallocate our budget over here where it's going to be better spent for the next 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, Kevin, if you wanted to leave our listeners with one piece of information, either about digital marketing, the space, the industry grow, kind of trends you've seen, what would you want to leave our listeners with? Well, I, I think, you know, something came out 
very recently from Shopify that was like really interesting that I think people should look up. And it was all of the, the trends. Um, it was Shopify's new 2023 e-commerce trends report. And it talked about how the average person is 208% more concerned about inflation than COVID. It talked about how the average cost to acquire a customer in 2023 is $29, which is like a 200% increase from eight years ago. Um, these things are interesting. Like these, these are macro trends that I think like people should read. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably directly interested in things like that. And it can help inform what business to create in 2023 or how to adapt the business that you do have. Um, you know, you really get to see, you know, what the trends are and, and how, you know, you can be aware of those and use that to inform how to make your business better. Yeah, that's fantastic. So Kevin, one last question before we head out, what would you, what do you hope to be celebrating in this next year, both personally and professionally? And as we wrap up 2022. It's a great question. Um, on the personal side, I mean, I'm looking for a significant other that I, you know, really like have a good relationship with. So like, I'm hoping for that in 2023. Um, on the professional side, you know, we're going to do about $20 million in revenue this year. I want to do at least 25 next year. Um, we have a hundred employees. I want to keep growing that. I just want those two numbers to grow to, to go up like more yeah. clients, more revenue, more employees. And that's yeah. really all I'm focused on. Grow and grow. Yeah. Grow and grow. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Well, Kevin, I really appreciate you taking the time to be on Business Ninjas and sharing your insights and your expertise. I think this has been a great episode and I look forward to staying in touch. Me too. Thank you very much for having me, Kelsey. It means a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely.